evening, Victory Church. What a blessing it is to be here with you to praise and worship our Father. He is so, so worthy, worthy of all the glory, worthy of all of our worship, worthy of our whole hearts. And I am so thankful that we have these times to come together in his presence and honor him, to, to learn from his word, to be edified in his presence. There is nothing like this. I'm so thankful for Victory Church. I'm so thankful for the Lord and the place that he has put us. So, so thankful because our God is so, so good. Let's welcome him here tonight because there's more than two or three gathered here. So we know he is right in the center of all of this. God, you are so good. You are so faithful. And we run out of words to tell you how much we love you and how much we appreciate all that you do all that you've done, all that you will do for all of eternity. God, we could start talking now and never run out of things to be thankful for from you. The cross would have been more than enough, but you pour out your abundant blessings. You pour out good and perfect gifts. Your mercy is new every morning. And you've made us brand new right along with it. You pour out grace upon grace, and your well never runs dry. God, we thank you for you tonight, for all that you are. You never leave us. You never get tired of us. And you love us unconditionally. So God, we give you our hearts. We give you our praise. We give you the glory that you are so, so worthy of. We choose to look to you, to look to the author and the perfecter of our faith. We look away from the crazy things of this world. We look away from the lies of the enemy, and we focus on you and your goodness. It's so easy to just pour out our praises on you then. God, we give you our all tonight because you gave us yours. We love you and we bless you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray these things. Amen. Let's praise him together tonight.
God of praise tonight. God is so good, and I am so thankful for his amazing grace. God, we love you tonight. We know that we can freely and boldly love you because you first loved us. You first chose us. You first called us into your marvelous light. We are not in the darkness anymore because we are children of your light because of your great love. Oh, God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name.
Bible says the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, over. Can you believe that? Amen. And then it goes on to say his ears are open to their prayers. Righteousness is huge. That's why we preach it so much around here. Because righteousness means I'm right standing. I'm standing right where I need to be standing to talk to God. I'm standing right where I need to be standing to hear from God. Amen. That is so important. God wants to talk to you. He wants to visit with you. He wants you to have communion with His body communion with his blood communion with the Holy Spirit will you do something right now in faith and say Lord you're going to talk to me more than ever before you're going to talk to me you're going to fellowship with me you're going to talk to me in your word where I didn't even really know or understand it you're going to talk to me about everything you are perfect everything that concerns me but you can only do it if I let you talk to me about it I appreciate your enthusiasm come on he wants to perfect everything if your finances concern you he wants to talk to you so that you use the word so it'll be perfected your family whatever that it is God is so good so worthy of the glory. He will perfect, perfect. Everybody say perfect. That's just a big word for perfect. He's just going to make it perfect. Come on, what is perfect above all you can ask or think? That's what I think perfect is. Perfect is I asked like this, but he answered like that. I asked him for this, but he did exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think because I can't ask for it on a level of it to be perfect, but he answers on the level of perfect. I answer on the level sometimes of my need or my faith. That's how I ask, but he answers on the level of perfect. And you know what? Sometimes for us, it's hard to receive perfect because perfect is above what we can ask or I wish I had a witness. Perfect is above what I can ask or I can think. Amen. That's why it's called the perfect law of liberty. The Word of God is the perfect law of liberty. Good Lord, have mercy. That's why the Apostle wrote, says, Be therefore perfect, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Thank God for that kind of life. Praise Him one more time for you. For you sit down in those perfect benches. Glory to God. God's good, amen? While you're doing it, look at somebody and say, I love you so much, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you so much. Hallelujah, amen? I'm going to tell my wife that. Hallelujah to God. I love you. Chicken, fried steak, mashed potatoes, gravy, corn on top. Yeah, that's, that's good loving. That's some good greasy loving, amen? We're so glad that you're with us tonight. We love you. Didn't we have a good time Sunday morning? And and I'm telling you, these people watching online, Jesus, help us. It's just been incredible what's happening. So many brand new people. We're picking up all the time, watching it. You can send it out even on your stuff. You can take it and put it into your computer, your phone, and you can shoot it out to everybody you know in the name of Jesus. And it's just, it's just unbelievable. Hallelujah to God. I'm living in rocket science. Glory to God. <laughs> God's faithful and worthy of the glory. If you hadn't had an opportunity, be sure and pick up this information about Sister Megan's new book. Amen. And you'll want this. And you want you want if you order a hard copy, she'll sign it for you. You sign it for her. Hallelujah. So be sure and get it. Get one for your friend. Because it's, 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 it's the word. It's the word put into today. And it's a blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget Saturday morning, the ladies meeting. 
And it's at my wife's house. I get to stay there. And we want you to come. Ladies, you're going to have a good time. Sister Kaylee is going to be speaking up there. You want to hear, she's the shortest grown woman in the church. She's got her hands raised up. You can barely see them, but she's got them up up there. Glory to God. You will help me, Jesus. It's too far for her to throw something at me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's going to be a great time. And Sunday morning, please, please, please invite your neighbor. And you say, well, we've got sickness in our family. Pray it out of there and y'all get here. In Jesus' name. Amen. The prayer of faith shall. And the Lord shall. Glory to God. There you go. There's you some good gospels. In Jesus' name. Amen going to ask our ushers to come. We appreciate you being here. God is faithful. And, you know, this year, uh, Easter is in March. So we're going to make a move that direction real soon. And we're going to have a wonderful Easter celebration. God is faithful. Amen. And worthy of, I love Easter. I think it's the best time of the year. Glory to God. I got my mamma and papa in me for that. Amen. God is faithful. So we appreciate you coming to all the meetings and the services that you can. And if you can't watch online, I talked to Granny today, my sweet Hispanic Granny from Merkel. And she says, Pastor, I'm watching every Sunday, every Sunday. We watch it again and again and again. God bless you, Granny. God bless all of you in Wichita Falls and Vernon and Dallas and Fort Worth. Bless everybody down in Brazil. The church is coming down there for a water baptismal service. Y'all can smile a little bit. Hallelujah. That'd be pretty fun. Amen. Our, our, our third largest group that watches is Brazil. And thank God for Brazil in the name of Jesus. Hey, Pakistan's beating them now. Oh, thank you. Mm, God's good. Amen. Father, I ask you to bless every seed, every life, every family, every home, every man, every woman, every child, every baby. Bless their pets, everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. all these singers give them a hand clap in the Lord and how many of you appreciate future generation of singers 
I love y'all. I appreciate you. Please, if you can, be with us Sunday morning. Because I know, I know, I, ain't, I don't have a doubt about it. God is so good. You get your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. God is so good. I want to I want to tell you that you're blessed. And I want you to believe you're blessed. And I want you to know you're blessed coming in and going out. And I want you to to be able to be aware of by faith every day that you are blessed. No matter what's going on, no matter what the economy, the government, all this other kind of stuff does, you are blessed. Say it with me. I am blessed. How many of y'all believe it now? Come on. I am blessed. <laughs> Your day is coming, Victor. God's good, amen. <laughs> so I want you to look in Romans chapter 15, and I'm going to show you in the Word of God. I'm going to help you to know blessed. Because there's one thing that I know is that God has to have his people blessed so that the people that are out there in the world will want to come into this kind of thing in the name of Jesus. I was telling a few people this particular thing. I had some minister friends that they went to heaven in their 80s. And a reason why that many of them went to heaven, strong preachers, is because their wives went to heaven first. And then they got to missing their wives, and they literally asked God, take me to heaven. And so I'm now saying, Lord, I'd like to be able to stand up here at Victory Church at 105 years old absolutely healthy and strong for this one thing, to show people this works. And I'd like for my wife to be able to stand there with me at 115 years old. Well, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I mean, no, I ain't going to live that long now. <laughs> if I come with a bullet hole in me Sunday, you'll know who gave it to me. Lord God. <laughs> but how many of you know that the world needs that kind of s- s- sign? We are more than. Come on, somebody say amen. It's another thing to say it in our houses, to say it in our church, but to be able to say it as a sign that the word of God works is a whole nother different. Because the Lord says, I'll use you as signs and wonders. That's some kind of. That's some kind of crazy in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's look at the book of Romans chapter 15. And if you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind, if you could, please either watch it again online. Write these scriptures down and begin to claim this. Begin to believe this. Begin to confess this for yourself in Jesus' name. I am sure that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. So that's telling me that the gospel of Christ, the good news of the anointed one, has got a blessing on it. That the gospel of Christ, everybody say the gospel of Christ. That's literally Paul's ministry is the gospel of Christ. Paul's job fell off the first holy roller in the Bible. Fell off that horse, rolled down the hill. First holy roller, He says, I'm coming in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. So when you you begin to read the good news of Christ, like Sunday morning, Christ in you. That's the gospel of Christ. Crucified with Christ. Buried with Christ. Risen with Christ. Raised with Christ. Seated at the right hand. Come on. Set my affections on those things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Amen. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. 
My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So that's the blessing of Christ. The gospel is the blessing of Christ on your life. So Paul's saying, when I come to you, I'm coming in the fullness of this blessing. I'm going, I am blessed, and I'm going to bless you because I'm going to tell you this good news of what Christ is. So you need to convince yourself in faith that I'm living in the fullness of the blessing of the good news of Christ. Give God a crazy praise. Am y'all with me now? Say amen. And I'm not discounting the Old Testament or some of that, but I'm going to tell you there's a blessing on the gospel of Christ that is the blessing. That is the big blessing. Amen. Because that's a better covenant. He's the, he is the Christ of good things to come. It's a better covenant established on better promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me give you another scripture because I'm going to stay in this line and, and show you how con- blessed you are. You're going to walk out of here. You'll listen to me and believe it. <laughs> you're going to walk out of here knowing you're more blessed than you've been. Amen. Ephesians, Ephesians, hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints that are in Ephesus and to the faithful In Christ Jesus. Verse number 2. Are you all with me? Grace be to you in peace from God, uh, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice verse 3. Who hath? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who hath blessed us? Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Now, I couldn't say this about the first scripture that I gave you till I came to the second scripture. These blessings are pronounced on you and spoken to you through the word of God. Amen. So God says you're blessed in the gospel of Jesus. God said you are. God put a blessing on the gospel of Christ. The Lord says right here that he's already, he says, I have already declared a blessing Hallelujah. The blessing of all spiritual blessings are yours through Christ. Amen. I've already said it. You don't try to get it. You believe God's already said it and you receive it. God said that in Christ you're blessed. How many believe I'm blessed? Now I'm going to tell you it's not like folks today even at the restaurant. You know, I think sometimes they're saying they're blessed to get a bigger tip. You don't, if you're not saved, you can't say you're blessed because blessing comes from God. So I think that the, the world, and I think even some people in church, has learned how to say, I'm blessed. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if they really know how it is. If I don't know how it is, it ain't working. I can have a brand new car out there, but if I don't, oh my God, you should have been with me when I tried to teach Courtney how to drive a standard. I had whiplash and I needed a healing. I mean, y'all with me say amen. And I, here's what I ended up saying. God's going to have to teach you, baby, in Jesus' name. I mean, y'all love me, say amen. She's going to forgive me and talk to me after church, amen. Y'all love me? I've got to know how this stuff works to believe in it. Amen. How many believe in the blood? How many of you know that most people didn't even know this? I sat down, Fonzo tell you, one day we were at a restaurant and there were some preachers there. And the Lord said, get up and tell them that I washed people in my own blood. And I'm sitting there with these ministers and their wives. And I said, I need to share something with you. And I don't think I'm wrong that Jesus washed us. We didn't wash ourselves. Jesus washed us. With his own blood. And I'm going to tell you what every one of them said. I've never heard that in my life. And they've been preaching for decades. You got to know how it works. You got to believe in how it works. Because you can't do all things without Jesus. But you can do all things through Christ. Here we go. That loves me so. You'll never get into all things through Christ. Unless you get into he loves me so. Everybody say, he loves me so much. Give him a crazy praise. Amen. They all told me, we're going to go to church Sunday morning and preach that in our churches. 
I said, send Victory Church a tithe. I never did get it. Hallelujah. But God's faithful. Amen. Here we go. Blessed be the God who hath blessed us, hath blessed. That word blessed means to pronounce a blessing. It's already done. God has already spoke a blessing. He says, this is blessed. The gospel is blessed. I say that in Christ, all my blessings are in Christ, and I speak them into Christ. I speak every blessing into Christ. I can't get healed without Jesus. I can't get saved without Jesus. I can't get blessed without Jesus. I can't get more blessed without Jesus. It's Jesus, Jesus, but it's Christ, the anointed. Hmm. How many of y'all love me? Let's go to more blessings. Put those up there for me, Sister Kaylee. Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed me. How many of y'all believe it? He has redeemed me. Redeemed means to be bought. He has redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written. It has already been written. Cursed is everyone. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to say, well, um, somebody's cursed me. You're cursed until Jesus buys you. He's already bought you, but you're still cursed till you believe it. You hear me? It is hard. You have to know that when you have somebody in your family that's cursed and you're blessed, you have to pray, Lord, I thank you that my blessing is going to flow over to them and I'm going to be blessed to be a blessing to them. Because the only way many of them are ever going to find Jesus is with your blessing. Your blessing that you have you have to be willing to give to them. Oh, help us, Jesus. And your blessing becomes bigger than their curse. And they, they'll, they'll see it. Sometimes it takes years. But they'll see it and say, I, I need that. I need that in the name of Jesus. How many of y'all love me? Say amen. amen. Okay. Amen. For it is written, curses everyone that hangs on a tree. Verse 14. Now stay with me. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that me right, we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. This is another one. The, that word blessing means it is a spoken blessing. It's there. This blessing is already there. You don't have to earn it because it's already been spoken and it's right there. Where is it? Where is it? Hallelujah. The blessing of Abraham is already on every Gentile that gives their heart to Jesus Christ. Yes. It's there. I don't have to say, Lord, I, I would like to live in the blessing of Abraham. His answer would be, well, have you given your life to Jesus? Yes, sir. Well, you got the blessing of Abraham. Yes. It is a, can, can I tell you, it's not an earned blessing. It is a spoken blessing that was is spoken into the principle. It is actually placed by God. He said it. You see, it, the hard time is, is that we have to believe that what God says is done. God said it's done. Amen. God said it is done. Science will say all kinds of stuff, but God said what God said. What God said. Come on, help me now. What, what God said. This is why the church is fought because we gotta, we're moving to what God said. The, the politics wants us to move to what they say. It, it is an, an elitism. Please don't get angry at me that says we know better for your life than you do. No, you can't know better for me because I know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So how can you come along and tell me that you know for me better than this because I know what better is. I have a better covenant established upon better promises and you can't give me anything better than that. So you don't need to come along and tell me how to live or dictate to me how to live or control me how to live because I've got to know that I'm in a better way of living than you can ever. Oh, y'all going to let me say one thing and then I'll back away. You even stole some of our Social Security. And you're not paying it back. Let's just give God God's praise. 
Some of you aren't clapping. Maybe you didn't agree with me, but I still told the truth. Let's say it again. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise. There we go. There we go. The thief comes to steal. And when thieves are stealing, you know what the Lord spoke to me the other day? I'm, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost and out of the wild blue. He says the enemy is going to try to steal people out of your ministry, steal people out of your church because he can't steal the word. He's been trying to. And he says that church is, put, Victory Church is putting it out there. So he's just going to try to take people right out of it. Because to steal people away from the pillar and the ground of the truth, if I don't believe it's the pillar and the ground of the truth, you ain't going to believe it. And if you don't believe it and I don't believe it, what in the world are we doing? Somebody help me. If we don't believe this thing, then why are we doing it? No, 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 no. God's faithful. So the blessing of Abraham is already in place. I'm not waiting for it to come. It's there. And the Lord's not a thief. He can't lie and he can't steal. Did you know he didn't steal my sins? He bought me out from under them. He didn't come along and steal my sin. He came along and bought me out from under my sin. That's worth giving God a crazy praise for. He didn't steal my sicknesses. He delivered me from them all. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Finally, be ye of one mind, having compassion, one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Next verse. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing. Everybody shout blessing. blessing. Now here we go. Knowing. Knowing. Right now our knowing has been under attack. Knowing that you are thereunto called. You are called to inherit the blessings. How do I get them? I inherit them. How do I inherit blessings? I am a child of God. I inherit blessings because I'm a child of God. Jesus paid the price for me to get it. The Father is going to honor me for it as a child of God. And Jesus also is the lawyer over the overseer of the blessings to make sure I get the blessings. And a part of his praying for me is, Randy's blessed, Randy's blessed, Randy's blessed. Lord, I agree with you. I am blessed. I say, I am blessed because you're praying, I am blessed. You declare, I am If the devil, he can't, he can't go to heaven. How many of y'all with me? Quit looking at Job. Amen? Don't read Daniel 21 days. Christ is already in you. You're not, you're not waiting. Through. You said, well, there's a war up there in the enemy. I went to a church and the, the preachers told me that there's an enemy up there fighting my blessings. No, your blessings don't come through the air. They come through Jesus. And he's already spoiled principalities and powers and has made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In what? In the cross. You are called to inherit blessing. To inherit what? Blessing. It's already there. It's already been spoken. There is a blessing. And you need to say, I'm a child of God. I inherit those blessings in Jesus' name. Do you want to be so blessed that your family gets blessed, not because they're waiting on you to kick the bucket to inherit it, but you're just so blessed you just start giving it out while you're still living and you get to enjoy them enjoying it. Because there's no greater joy than watching people that you love get blessed because you can bless them because you're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Y'all staying with me? I'm blessed. 
I don't feel like it. You didn't, you don't care. They don't care if you feel like it or not. It's there. Amen. This is interesting right here. I'm going to show you something. So the day began to wear away. How many ever had any of them days? The day began to wear away. That's a weird way for the miracle to start. But a lot of miracles come when the day has been kind of wearing away. Amen, Mama. <laughs> then came the twelve and said to Jesus, Send the multitude away, that they may go into town and country round about and lodge or spend the night. Because that means they're so far out there, they, they need a hotel room. I've gone to preach at places that Fonda and I couldn't even get in between the sheets because of the bugs. I've gone to places that the lizard was so big in the room that I took the sheet underneath me so that the lizard would not get in the covers with me. That's an experience all by itself. Mm. Send the multitude away that they may go into towns and country and round about lodge and get victuals, some food, for we are here in a desert place. Everybody said desert place. Have you ever felt like you're in a desert place? But it doesn't matter if Jesus is there with you. It doesn't matter because the blessing is with you no matter where you are. Dr. Summerall used to look at me right in the face and say, Randy, the Lord could put me down in the middle of a desert in Africa. Set me down there with just me and my Bible. You come back a year later and I'll have a church there. That's tough old man talking. I believed him because he believed it. Then he said unto them, give, you, give, it, give, you something, give them something to eat. Only Jesus would ask you that. In the middle of nowhere with almost nothing, let's have some food. Yeah. And they said, we have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all of these people. How many know it's not enough? How many of y'all know this story? It's not enough. Just because you heard it before. Come on, stay with me now. For they were about 5,000 men. How many know you're looking? They say, with women and children, you're looking at probably 15 to up to 20,000. This is our problem. We look at this and try to compare it to that and never put in the fact that we're blessed. Everybody say, I am blessed. Hmm. About 5,000 men, he said to the disciples, make them sit down by 50s in the company. And they did so and made them all sit down. Have y'all staying with me? Amen. Amen. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, here's what he did. He put a blessing on them. You can't put a blessing on nothing unless you know you're blessed. You have to believe I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed so that I can say blessed. I'm blessed and I take some of my blessing and I put it on this. That's why people struggle. You're asking God to do something and you don't think you're blessed. You're taking your blessing and you're blessing it. You're not losing some of your blessing. Because you're blessed coming in and going out. You're blessed to be the head and not the tail. You're blessed to be above and not beneath. You ain't going to run out of blessing something if you believe you're blessed. Huh? Oh, well, I better not today. I did a lot of blessing yesterday. I probably, no, 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 no. Amen. 
And if you can't do nothing, mercy's new every morning. Put some mercy on that son of a gun. He blessed them and broke it and gave it to the disciples to sit before the multitude. They all did eat and were filled, and there was taken up from fragments that remained 12 baskets. There are 12 disciples. You can't tell me that that's coincidence that all 12 disciples left with a full basket. You can't tell me that if you realize you're blessed to be a blessing and you bless it, that you'll walk away with the biggest part of the blessing. And that blessing is going to help you down the line because if you read the story, later on in a couple of chapters, Jesus said, have you forgotten the, the, the baskets? Have you forgotten the baskets that you carried off? Have you forgotten you're over here worried about stuff because you're not thinking about the baskets that I left you blessed with? Amen. Amen. How many of y'all getting something with me? How many blessed? Say I'm blessed. <laughs> so it don't matter. It don't, ma- it don't matter. I'm blessed. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm blessed. Amen? Let's keep going. Put another scripture up there. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you. Now, I'm, I'm deliberately doing this. I'm deliberately doing this because the other night we were watching Sunday night some service on TV on some channel of some church that runs thousands of people. And because it was the first Sunday like here, they were doing communion. And so they called the ushers up, and here they came. And here's what they said. Here's what the preacher said. I'm going to tell you that the, the communion does absolutely nothing for you. And if I could have, but it would have broke my TV. And I, there's no way that shoe would have hit him. I was, I was, how many y'all with me? Now I want you to see something about communion. I've preached some of this before, but I still don't think it activated people like it should. And I'm preaching it also to this man right here because he will now do something with communion before he serves it. The cup of blessings which we the cup of blessings which we we bless it. So the broken body and the shed blood, the blood is the cup of blessing, right? So what Brother Ed can do is pick it up and say, I bless this. It's a blessing. I bless this to heal every person in the church today. Go ahead and shout a little while. And then on that first Sunday, people can walk up to it, hey, uh, yeah. and say, oh, there's communion. So you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So here's the communion. And you can see Cisco and Morgan come by with no fuss, Gus, lay their hand on and say, I bless this that will heal everybody that takes it this morning. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my blessing on to that blessing. And then we give it out there. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not too much for that pulling all that stuff off. But you can't buy it any other way anymore since that COVID junk, amen? So it forced everybody to start making it like this, and we can't get it any other way. Are you with me? And, they, and so, hallelujah, amen. And some of it I think is so old, it really is wine. That grape juice, you know what I'm saying. So when I get it in my hands, I can bless it. And I can say, this, I bless this, and this is what this is going to do for me today. And I put the blessing on it to do that. So it enters my body blessed, 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 blessed and blessed, multiplied blessed, couples blessed, Ministry blessed, 
church blessed, I bless. Help me, help me, help me. Lift your hand and give God a crazy praise. So that, don't be angry, but that pastor just plowed out lied to his church. I wouldn't even take it if it don't do nothing for me. What's the point in reading the Word of God unless it does something for me? It's life to those that find it and health to all their flesh. It's a lamp to my feet and a light. So I read it because of what it does. I get faith. I get, I get faith. I get faith. I get faith. Faith cometh. Faith comes. Faith comes. His Word coming to me builds my faith. And it says according to your faith. Be it done unto you. So this is incredible. Amen. So what I can do is I can say, wait a minute. I'm going to take these scriptures and I'm going to be more blessed. And I'm not just going to be able to say, well, I'm blessed. No, it's going to be all over the place. It's all over the place. It's just all over the place. And I'm blessed to be a blessing all over the place. I, I Come on now, help me now. I'm blessed to be a blessing for, to myself. I know how to bless myself. Just take that word and just bless my, just bless myself. Amen. I was, I'm out there walking last year around the Y out there, and I'm just praising God. And a sweet lady walked up to me and said, man, I want to talk to you. She said, there's something about you. Are you married? <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And I said, but ma'am, I'm, I'm 69 years old, and I've been married for 100 years. <laughs> and I said, what you're seeing on me is the blessing. And what you really want is you want blessing. And I prayed for her right out there. Let me know that's what really people want from you is the blessing. Everybody say, I'm blessed. Because this says you are. The Lord put the blessing in it. In it. Now, I'm going to finish, and I'm not going to throw this scripture up there. How many of you read the book of Revelation? And it's just, just, just you're just saying, oh, my God. And, and you're trying to pinpoint if we're there, if we're not there, if it's this or this. But you understand this about the book of Revelation. It says, blessed are they that read the words of this prophecy. So you don't read it to understand it. You read it to be blessed, but Come on now. <laughs> to get a blessing. And as it unfolds, you'll understand it. Are you with me? And you're not there trying to figure out because the Spirit guides you into all truth. But then He also shows you things to come. So He'll take that scripture and show you that's coming. I'm going to tell you a secret. You won't see the signs of the times coming until you can see by stripes I'm healed coming. I'm more than a conqueror coming. Because he shows me things to come. He's got to show me that's coming. It's mine. I'm more than a conqueror. You see, we take that show me things to come. I was talking with Ashley about it a few weeks ago. I said, Ashley, show me things to come. is actually him showing me that scripture and proving it to me, showing me these things, showing me I'm more than a conqueror, showing me, that's showing me things to come. And we think it's all out there in the future. We need something right now. <laughs> Let's stand together. How many believe that it says, blessed be the Lord that daily loads me with benefits? Let me give it to you in the more my Blessed be the Lord that lays on me some benefit. Lay it on me. Lay a little bit on me. Amen. Load me. Load me. Load me. Load me. Load me with benefit. Not a conemption fit. Benefit. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our voice and praise the Lord. You, you know you heard the word. Come on. You know you heard the word. You know what you heard. You know you're on a rock in the gates of hell. I, you know in whom you believe. You're persuaded. 
that he is able, powerful to keep that you've committed unto him against that day. What have you committed? He's going to keep it. What you have committed, he's going to guard it. What you have committed, what you have committed, what you've given to him, he's going to guard it. I was reading an article. This came out from a banks and people that know more about that than I do. That every bill you have, unless it came straight from the printing, has, has at least been through one drug transaction. I mean, y'all love me. Those bills have been through a drug transaction. How I many you know when you get that money, you say, Lord, my blundy is blessed. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not where it's been, it's where it's going to go now in the name of Jesus. It's, it's where it's going to go. I'm using this, and I'm going to live in the law of seed time and harvest with this. I'm going to live in, the, I'm going to live in God's law with this, and I redeem this. You see, Murphy's law says what has been will be. There's laws all over the place. Look them up. Talk to Siri. <laughs> Look them up, and you're going to find out there's laws all over the place. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will set you free from those other laws. Let me love the Lord. Say amen. Let me bless you. Father, I bless this church. I bless the people that are here. I bless the people that are not here. I bless the people that are going to watch this in the days to come. I say, because the Bible says we are, the scriptures declares that we are, we are, we are blessed. How do you think, how do you think in my lifetime that I would have stepped into a church that was closed maybe? I stepped into a church that was closed. My papa started a church in Breckenridge, Texas, and years later it closed down, sanctuary, everything. And I thought, my papa started that church. We're going to go down there, and the, they had a little house, moved into that house. I said, I'm going to stay here for six months. And we opened that building up. We opened that building up. We left six months later. There was over 100 people coming to that church. And I said, we're not, I'm not going to let something my papa start stay closed. That's not right. I stepped in there with nobody. I don't understand people that just, you got to have this and got to have that. Well, sometimes you just got to believe you're blessed and step into something. with me Father I thank you for the blessing and I love these people I thank you for putting me here I thank you that I've got more years to go in divine strength and health I thank you that I'm going to preach more truth than I've ever had and we're going to be filled with truth and it will be a shield and buckler for everybody in this house in Jesus name and everybody said amen I love you I appreciate you thank you for coming Thank you for coming. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for putting up with me when I'm a little bit preaching crazy. But I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name.